Oh, okay. Good morning. So, Swarm City. Um, so, just as many other Ethereum projects, we are trying to. Oh, is this one? Thank you. Uh, we are. This is our vision. Just like uh, many other Ethereum projects, we want to enable humans to transact, create, and share value without a middleman or a third party on a global scale, generating contextual reputation. Um, our mission is to do this in a way where normal people like our parents actually understand what we are doing. So we don't want to um, um, have people experience the blockchain, basically. We want to really make it really easy to use. Um, today we want to discuss uh, two topics. Uh, we are trying to solve uh, Ethereum byte um, problems that we encounter in creating an app that is consumer facing. So the first thing we want to talk about is the IPFS consortium. The second one is the gas station. So the first thing, IPFS consortium. So if you want to create an app like we do that's totally decentralized, you still need storage. We needed to find a way to have data persistence. So even if you do it on IPFS, you have to make sure that your data is persisted over time the way we um, came up with that solution is uh, really um, interesting because it's the way we came up with the solution uh, actually is kind of the solution. It's collaboration because it's key in the blockchain world. So we sat together with uh, Givet in Barcelona and many other people. Um, and uh, after a night of brainstorming, we came up with this really simple solution. I'll pin your data if you pin mine for an in-depth or a more in-depth uh, technical overview of that solution, I'll hand it over to Spanet. Yeah. Okay, good morning everybody. Um, so the solution we came up with uh, to, for the IPVS consortium is actually that we created uh, smart contracts. So by the way, this works uh, on top of another persistency uh, consortium project by Piper Merriam. So we tried to extend it a little bit and make it more general for that everybody could use it in like a more flexible way. So we created a smart contract, the IPVS proxy uh, contract. And this contract will just emit events. So we have two events like hash added. So if an IPFS hash gets added or needs to be added to the consortium, uh, it has a time to live, for example, and then the IPFS hash itself. And the hash removed function. So if you don't need the data anymore and you want it uh, out of the consortium so it's not pinned anymore, uh, you can do that. Then in the smart contract itself, uh, we implement the two functions, add hash and remove hash, which basically just emit these two events. So it's very low on gas to actually um, call these two functions. Then all these members in the IPVS Persistence Consortium, they will um, install a script on their respectively, uh, respective uh, IPFS nodes, which is a proxy listener, which is just a, a script that goes and listens to these events on that IPFS proxy contract. So that's the general setup. Now, um, there are a few more things there. For example, the IPVS proxy contract contains a list, a sort of a white list, with all the members of the IPVS consortium uh, members. So that means that all this, uh, their public keys are in there. So it can actually verify if they call the contracts um, so that only IPVS member uh, hashes are pinned in the IPVS uh, nodes itself. So there are different ways of adding um, your hashes to the IPVS consortium. So first of all, if you have a DAP or a script which, want to, uh, which wants to pin uh, content, you can just call the function add hash or remove hash. So that's the way from doing it from your DAP itself for the front end. Um, but we also expose these IPFS events as a separate Solidity file, which you can just include in your own smart contract. So if you're the, the logic of your DAP, uh, actually needs to store IPVS content from, um, from on-chain, basically. Then you can just create your contracts by implementing I these IPFS events. And then the consortium members can add their contracts to the IPVS proxy. So it has a second list in there. And if they add it to the IPVS proxy contracts, then these proxy listener scripts will also start to listen to these same events in all the specific smart contracts that they use. Um, now concerning the governance uh, of the IPVS consortium. So we don't want uh, one single owner uh, to manage the consortium. So that's why we added uh, multi-members. So that's basically the multi-sig uh, code 
to vote on adding or removing members. Uh, all the members, they pledge to persist each other's data um, and they allocate an equal amount of disk space or they sort of donate uh, all an equal amount of disk space uh, in the consortium. So it's interesting to notice that um, so we can deploy one of these contracts, which has a certain quotum, and all the members there, um, they say, okay, we are do going to do this, like, for example, with a quotum of 10 gigabytes. Uh, but it's very easy to deploy a second contract, which then has, like, for example, a quotum of 50 gigabytes. So we can just choose uh, to set up new of these um, contracts. Some of the future enhancements that we want to bring uh, is that we can also uh, do pinning via Whisper. Um, so the idea is that you would just call uh, or create a data, f uh, data payload in Whisper, which has the same command, so add hash and remove hash, uh, which is the IPFS hash itself and the time to live. You will create a hash and you will actually sign with an elliptic curve signature um, this payload. Um, and you can just send it through a Whisper channel and we can have then the, the script listen to this Whisper channel uh, and just pick these things up. Um, so to give, to give a roundup on the IPVS consortium, so we have the possibility to do on-chain pinning by a smart contract. Uh, we can do off-chain pinning by the DAP or the scripts, which then performs the transaction. Um, we can then, with, using the Whisper solution, also do off-chain pinning uh, without a transaction. Um, so just uh, by signing it with your, uh, with your own key. We have the multi-member voting to add and remove participants, the data quotum. Uh, but on top of that, we also support uh, that the network is permissionless. And maybe I'll give it back to Kim Flerk to uh, yeah. explain that. So that's a, that's a really interesting case. Um, what's the next one? So anyone can run this uh, proxy script at home on their own computers. And um, like we saw in uh, Barcelona a couple of weeks ago when the Spanish government tries to block IPFS host names, um, that we think it, it can be powerful that many people can actually have a voice and run this software. Um, just on their own computers. Um, currently, the IPFS consortium is, of course, uh, uh, in, in, in kind of prototype, uh, or, or it's, it's like we, we proved that it works, but of course, we are inviting everybody to, to join us and to make sure that we can have uh, data persistence in a decentral way. Um, so the second uh, thing we want to talk about is the gas station. Um, so what we do if we want people um, to onboard our project, of course, we send them some smart city tokens. But then we always have to say, and you need a little bit of ether to actually do something with it because every transaction, and then you have to tell a whole story about gas, right? So for, for a lot of people, like my dad, for instance, he was saying, like, why, why do, do I need two coins now or two tokens? Um, so our ideal solution would be that it is a one-click solution in the front end, in the app, um, where people can actually exchange a little bit of their tokens um, uh, for gas. Um, our design process is, is kind of funny, I think, because we always use the metaphor of a city. So if you drive around the city, you of course need gas, and what do you do then? You go to a gas station. Um, oh, I'm gonna uh, hand it over to Sponet for this. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so the way many of uh, the existing Ethereum projects solve it currently is by just giving away some free gas, so just sending some gas to a certain address which was created in a wallet uh, in the hope that they will actually use that gas to perform transactions in their ecosystem or to use their app. But most of the time you can't be sure if they will actually use the gas for that or they just do some sort of civil attack and just try to collect as much free gas as possible. Uh, another problem is also that if your app becomes very successful, you have to have a lot of yeah, ether uh, somewhere just to provide everybody with some free gas to get started. Uh, so we try to come up with a solution where you can actually just do the exchange. We have like a durable solution that people just are able to pay with our tokens um, for getting the initial gas. So it's, always, it's also a two-part solution. Uh, so first of all, there's an API uh, which needs to run, which is a gas station service. And next to that, we have a gas station contract that's deployed uh, in lockstep with that. So people can actually just uh, run it themselves. So first of all, you decide which ERC20 token you would uh, like to support. So in our case, it's Swarm City token. Uh, and then you send some initial ether, which is just one ether because it's just about providing initial gas, so it doesn't need a uh, big amount of ether. Uh, you send it to the gas station, so you sort of fill it up uh, with ether. 
So that's the setup. Um, if you then have a DAP, so the, the use case here is that you have like a, a new user who someone just sends some, a couple of these Swarm CD tokens, but he doesn't have any gas, so he can't do any transaction yet. So the thing he can calculate is how much uh, way he will actually need to perform you know, the, the first transactions that he wants to do uh, to get started. So we'll ask to the gas station service, what is your price for this amount of way that I will need? The gas station, he will consult the public um, uh, price API to see what the current exchange rate is for Ether to Swarm City tokens. And he will reply uh, to say, okay, this many way would cost you that many Swarm City tokens. Uh, the next thing that happens is that the device itself or the DAP will sign an allowance, which is a, an ERC20 function, to the gas station contract for that amount of Swarm City tokens. Um, and on top of that, you will create an elliptic curve signature um, for all these parameters. So the amount of uh, uh, Swarm City tokens is going to give and, and all that. So we're going to adapt um, a little on one of the next slides. So he will send this signed transaction back to the gas station service. And then the gas station service will verify that transaction. So we'll decode it. And if it all fits uh, all the prerequisites, it will actually send gas to that address, so the address of the DAP, um, to execute the allowance call. When he sees that that gas has arrived, he will uh, execute the allowance transaction by just putting it into the transaction pool. And when that transaction is mined, uh, the gas station service will call a function in the gas station, which we call push fill. So let me quickly show like how it begins. It's not a complete function, but it's just to get you uh, to give you an idea about how it works. Um, so what does it give with push fill? So it provides a token address, so which is the ERC20 token that you support or you want to exchange. It gives a, val a validity date, which is expressed in a block number. So this sort of personal um, exchange rate is valid as a validity period. Um, we add a random number uh, to create some entropy on the. Um, but it, that will come later also. You will say how many of these swarms uh, tokens you can take from him uh, in exchange for how many way in Ether you will give them. Uh, then you also provide the gas tank client, which is the address of the DAP, so the wallet address from the DAP, and then the signature. Um, so the thing that the contract will do, it will actually recreate that same hash with all these parameters. And here he will verify if the signature of all these parameters are actually uh, match up to the address of the gas tank clients. If so, he does the actual exchange, so the code is not here, um, but, and he will uh, mark that specific, um, let's say, contract or that specific configuration to be executed so he can't uh, repeat it twice. Um, concerning risk mitigation, there's one a uh, problem because you have to trust the gas station service that it will actually also perform the second transaction. So you, if you give him the allowance uh, transaction, you must be sure that he actually doesn't um, yeah, that he does that push fill thing. So to mitigate that, um, so I told you before that the API service uh, responds with so many way would cause that many swarm tokens, but actually is also going to give a, a liquidity signature on these parameters with his uh, key because it, all, it also has a wallet, obviously. And then we created a second function which is called push, uh, sorry, pull fill, and it will verify the same parameters, but will actually just verify if these parameters were signed by the owner. And this function can be called by the gas station, uh, sorry, by the, the client who uses the gas station. So he has a certitude that if they do the exchange, they sort of mutually uh, give the allowance to do exactly that uh, transaction. So why would you participate or why would you run a gas station? Uh, because we, uh, we can define, or you can define, an uplift for the price you sell your Ether for. So that means if you would, for example, say 10% uplift, if your gas station sells out, because the amount of Ether decreases, the amount of Swarm tokens increases, you will end up with, when you sell all your Ether, uh, with an amount of Swarm City tokens, which equals like 1.1 1 .1, uh, Ether. Um, so, yeah. So the result of that is that anybody can just download that API script, deploy its own um, contract, prime it, we call it, with Ether, then configure it, like what ERC20 tokens do you want to accept in your gas station, 
then tell it how much uh, ether markup you want to sell it for and just start it. Um, you can find everything we uh, are doing on um, these uh, GitHub um, links and also on this is .swarm city. Um, you will find um, more information on everything we do. But there is, of course, one more thing that oh. we created. Um, so, as you see, the gas station, it's at a certain time, it needs some maintenance because it needs to be refilled because like the, the eater uh, gets depleted in the end. Uh, we also try to solve that, and we have like prototype code of that, which we can, you can also find on our GitHub. Um, so we created an integration with Ether Delta. So the thing is that the gas station serve it itself. It contains a wallet. So when it's, uh, it has a certain amount of Swarm CD tokens, and it's almost depleted of Ether, um, the gas station service can actually look into the Ether Delta and try to find a buy order for Swarm CD tokens for Ether. So when he finds one, he will actually purchase it because it's like anonymous. I mean, you don't need an account uh, or registration or whatsoever. Uh, so we just created like a machine-to-machine -machine trading that actually uh, buys uh, Ether in exchange for his Swarm tokens. So the thing is you can actually refill or automatically uh, refill your gas station with Ether to start again. Um, and closing that loop, um, and this, so this can be fully automated, so you don't actually need to manage uh, the gas station any, anymore, you just can have it run. Um, when it does the exchange, you will actually end up with more ether than you started with, so uh, you will end up in this situation with like 1.1 ether instead of one ether. So yeah, we, we thought it was appropriate to call that the gift that keeps on giving. So basically, that is, thank you.